NFL teams are constantly changing up the way that they deploy players. And over the last two games, there are three teams that could be shaking up their backfield. And two of these players are available in most fantasy leagues and might offer the sort of upside that could help us win our leagues if things break our way. The first backfield that we have to dive into, and I know it's gonna sound a little bit gross, but it is the New England Patriots. Not a lot of scoring coming from this offense, but when we look at the trends over the last several games for Ramondre Stevenson, they're as strong, if not stronger, than any in the NFL. In fact, if we come over to the utilization suite of tools at fantasylife.com, which you can look at for free, and you go to the game log view and look at the Patriots backfield, we can see Ramondre Stevenson coming off the bye. Into week 12, he had season highs and snaps at 78% and rushing attempts at 68%. And if we toggle over to just look at his opportunities, we can take rushing attempts plus targets over the last two games. He has 24 and 26, and he has had 13.2 and 21.7 fantasy points in those two outings. And if we just take a step back and look at the last four games for Ramondre Stevenson, we can see that a new floor has also emerged. 14 to 15 opportunities per game. And we already talked about that ceiling. It's 25 to 26. And that now puts Ramondre Stevenson into the league of guys like Saquon Barkley. Yeah, not on a prolific offense. Probably not going to have very many opportunities to score multiple touchdowns in a game. But because the utilization is so robust, it makes it really hard for this type of player to fail. In fact, if we go back to 2011, the average finish was running back 10, scoring 16.8 fantasy points per game for guys that profiled similarly to Ramondre Stevenson. And because of that, I have upgraded him. He is now a mid-range running back two to high-end running back two, and he's certainly capable of giving you running back one spike performances the rest of the way. The second backfield we need to dive into is the Chicago Bears. Now, we don't have a trend as strong as what we saw in New England with Ramondre Stevenson, but what we do have is a running back that is a rookie in Roshan Johnson that's available in over 70% of fantasy leagues, and he did some very positive things in Week 12. Johnson posted a season-high 75% snap share, season-high 44% rush share, and season-high route participation of 49%. Now, Deonta Foreman was inactive due to injury for this game, and that's obviously a factor here. But Khalil Herbert was available, and this was the guy that was the starting running back to start the Bears season. He's been back from IR for two weeks, but if we isolate down to just Johnson and Herbert, 65% of the opportunities went to the rookie. Ultimately, Johnson had 11 rushing attempts and four targets. I know what you're thinking. That's not going to win my fantasy league for me, Dwayne. What are you talking about? And while I agree, I want to keep an open mind. And there are a few reasons for that. First of all, Roshan Johnson's a guy that they talked about back in training camp on passing downs. They used him that way early in the year. So week 12 wasn't the first time that we've seen him in long down and distance and two minute offense situations. And when we look at the history of the way rookie running backs work, those are two of the hardest roles to take over and are often the barrier to a full-time workload. Secondly, we've got the Bears who don't have a lot to play for. Why wouldn't they want to see what they have in the rookie out of Texas? They've got to think about what they're going to be doing in the draft in 2024. And then finally, we've got just an overarching trend over multiple years of data where we often see the rookies take over a larger workload towards the end of the year. When we put all those things together, it doesn't guarantee that Roshan Johnson is suddenly going to take over the Bears backfield, but there are a lot of data points playing in his favor. So when considering all the factors, Roshan Johnson upgrades to a running back for stash play. He could give you some standalone value, even if he remains in a committee, but he has that running back to upside and possibly possibly even a little bit more than that if the Bears fully commit. Again, available in over 70% of fantasy leagues, he makes a fantastic pickup to have on your bench for the fantasy playoffs. 
The final situation we've got to analyze is the Jacksonville Jaguars backfield. Now, Travis Etienne remains the clear lead back, but since the bye week, we have seen another name emerge as the clear number two. And if something happened to Travis Etienne, you could be sitting on a league winner. And the player we're talking about here is not rookie Tank Bixby. It is the free agent acquisition Dearnest Johnson. Some of you might remember him from a couple of years ago when the Browns had some injury issues with Kareem Hunt. Johnson stepped in and played really well. He had some nice fantasy outings. Hasn't really done a lot since then. But over these last three games, he has taken over this running back two role in Jacksonville. And in week 12, he had season highs for snaps, rushing attempts, and route participation. There is a chance that Johnson hangs on to this route participation and has some standalone value as a receiver. Look, ETN is a near lock to remain the primary back on early downs, but last week that route participation boost came because Johnson took over the long down and distance work with 55% of the snaps, and he also led the team with 75% of the snaps in the two minute offense. And while it would be nice to get a little bit of standalone value out of Johnson, we do have a big bye week on the horizon. The bigger picture thing is looking at his value contingency wise, if something happens to Travis Etienne. The Jaguars are finally playing good offense. Trevor Lawrence coming off of his two best games of the season. And there's a chance that if something happened to ETN, we could be talking about a player handling 65 to 70% of the workload and also someone that has shown us an explosive playmaking ability in the past. So when you take all the puzzle pieces for Dearness Johnson and you put them together, you've got a mid-range running back four in PPR formats thanks to that role in the passing game, but he's got that RB1 upside if something does happen to ETN. He's available in 90% of leagues right now, and that makes him a must add, especially if you're playing in deeper or medium sized leagues, heading into the playoffs, and you're looking at your bench and you're just trying to figure out how do I add a player that could go off down the fantasy stretch that helps me win my league? Dearness Johnson is a name to remember.